All right, so the last example we're gonna look at here is how we can work with data that comes from more than one source. So it's gonna be very uncommon that you're going to find one data set that includes everything that you want. Um, in particular, as you start researching, you're gonna find stuff from multiple sources. Um, so there's a couple of ways that we can deal with this and we'll look at at the very end here, sort of a, another way of handling this, but the, by far the easiest way to do this is to just open these files separately in Excel merge them together and then work with them like we did in the last example where we had um, two different columns from the same data set. Uh, so here is uh, an example I've made with our uh, historical temperatures and carbon output, um, which is some really interesting data that I found on um, uh, datahub.io. And this is pretty cool. So it's uh, all the way back to 1751 super fascinating already. Um, lots of info here, some visualizations you can check out. But if you scroll down here, um, the data is available as CSV, which is what we want, um, and also in JSON, which is a very common format we'll talk about for our next project. So I downloaded this stuff and opened it in Excel. Um, here's our historical observed data we saw before. You've got the year and the um, average temperature for the year. And then this is our CO2 data. So we've got also here, we've got total, and then subdivided into these different categories right here. Those are all zeros. Later, that data gets filled in. Um, but what I want to do is be able to merge these two files because I want to have the temperature data plus this total data. So right off the bat, I notice a, a problem. And that's that my temp data is from, starts at 1950, but this starts at 1751. So I'm going to go ahead and just select all of the rows up to 1949 like this. And we're going to do a much bigger dive into Excel and Google Sheets in a little while, um, showing you some other techniques here. But um, I would just select those and uh, hit delete. So now my data is only in that range. And then I want to grab this total column here. I don't need any of the other data, so I just click on B copy it, select where I want it to go, and paste it in. Now my data is aligned and correct, um, and I've got it all in one place. Uh, one other thing, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom here, and I see that the CO2 data ends at 2010. We've got some extra ones here, so I'm also just going to delete those so that I don't have caps in my visualization. Then one more thing I want to do, um, year here makes sense. Tmax is a little vague, so I'm going to call this temp. And I'm going to call this CO2. And this is just going to make loading my data a little easier, easier for me to understand what's going on. Now, I wouldn't want to save over my file here um, because I don't want to destroy anything. So I'm going to do save as. And we're going to do this in my demo folder. And oh, and we'll do it in our modified data. So let's call this temp and CO2 emissions. You can call it whatever you want. Save it as a CSV file. And now uh, we've got all the other stuff from before. It's unmodified, and we've got this new version. And this is really the process I recommend. Um, that way, you don't have to go back and re-download stuff and whatever. OK. So rather than um, build this all live for you, which I don't think there's that much benefit for this one, um, I'm just going to walk you through this example, because it's very similar to the last one that we looked at. Um, we're loading the file here. Um, I've got my labels, which will be our years, and um, two variables for our different data sets, temperatures and emissions. I'm loading all that stuff just like we did before. Um, and that's all very straightforward. The options here are the same. Our data set uh, way that we do this is very much exactly the same as before us too. We're going to come back to this y-axis ID part. Um, actually, let's comment this out because I want you to see what it looks like if we don't include this. So um, if, and let me comment this out here too. Let's see. Okay, so this is what it would look like without this extra stuff. We've got our CO2 emissions is graphed properly, but we notice that the temperature is just stuck down at the bottom. Um, now, you might want to pause for a second and try to guess why this looks the way it looks. Um, the reason is that CO2 is measured in um, millions of tons. So it, it goes all the way up to 10,000 up here, whereas our temperature is in degrees Fahrenheit. So um, obviously within the range of zero to 10,000, these numbers are so small, they appear as a flat line at the bottom. Um, now this is hard because our, our units are different, but luckily there's a really 
easy way to fix this. And that's by defining um, additional axes. We can have one on the left, one on the right, and have our data in the same visualization following different um, sort of units. Um, so that's what is happening over here. And if we take a look, this is under scales, Y axis, because this is our vertical axis. And then um, we want to turn them on. The, this one will be on the left. This is temperature. And then the label will be temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. Same thing over here, uh, true on the right-hand side. And this is CO2 emissions in million metric tons. Now, um, I'm going to comment this out too. We'll see what that does. The last thing we need to do is we need to tie the axis to the data that we're uh, displaying. So for this axis, we give it an ID. And this is just text. So I'm calling this temperature. This one has an ID of CO2. And then up here in our data, this is where we connect them together. So the y-axis ID for both of these gets connected to this um, scale axis down here. So now when I run this, all of a sudden my temperature comes back up, which is what I want. And we can see on the left here, it's in degrees Fahrenheit. And on the right, it's in CO2 um, emissions. Super. One last thing that we want to change. You'll notice that we've got these overlapping grids because they're being measured in different scales. Definitely not what we want. So we can pick which one we want to not draw the grid lines for and include in its definition this draw grid lines, or sorry, grid lines draw on chart area false for one of them. And so now in this case, it's temperature is the one that's drawn and the other one's left off. You could pick um, and there you go. So this is just kind of like an additional piece to the example we looked at before. Um, and I'm sure you could think of lots of things we could do to improve this, but I wanted to show you just kind of how you might do that. Um, one other way, this is by far the harder way. Um, this chart looks exactly the same, but this loads from two different files and its format is quite different than how we've done it so far. So I'm not gonna go through the details. If you're interested, you can check out this example. Um, it's listed as a bonus, um, but it might be interesting, especially if you've done some JavaScript before. Um, so use the, the right tools for the job when you need them. Excel is so awesome as a quick way of merging data, editing data, and then you can do the visualization work all in chart.js.